Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Synchro Space Program 1.11. I think I've figured out what my problem has been with the Dark Star. It turns out there was a number I was neglecting, a number called Flow Malt Limit. Flow Malt Limit apparently is just an arbitrary limit and I think it was meant to limit like the rapier engine in the stock game from going completely out of whack, uh, you know, doing phenomenal things. And so it's just an arbitrary limit and I had to adjust that basically because again what I had done was limited the scramjet mode to a very low thrust at sea level and stationary and then we have a very high multiplier once we get fast right that's how we're doing the scramjet but this flow malt limit was limiting it so that it couldn't get the thrust that it was supposed to so when we take a look at the engine uh, mode now it actually has less indicated thrust than it used to the static thrust is just 30 kilonewtons which is probably a little bit high obviously it is high for a scramjet at in a static position but uh, we'll go with it for now because it's not going to hurt anything and uh, the max thrust it's certainly not going to be enough to get you off the ground or something like that and the max thrust is 1500 which is less than it was in the previous video and you'll never get that but um, I was able to set it less because I fixed this flow malt limit thing. So yeah, it was, uh, and I better not have it on that mode. But it doesn't matter. We're not going to look at this first. We're, I've, I'm sick of this SR-72. No, not really. But um, we'll use this as the grand finale, if you will, as we'll get a little bit faster than we have before, or a lot faster than we have before. I am going to first test the XB70, which I uh, added a bump map for and adjusted a little bit. I added the FAR module to the wings and also the canards. Uh, not to the vertical stabilizers, though. That does, those do not have FAR. Those are just a stock module. It's safer that way. Uh, we're still using the procedural wings for control surfaces. Uh, but only those. The canards are parts, actual parts that will come with it. And we are going to try it out. Now, unfortunately, the wing tip tilt is not going to do anything, I don't think. Or it might throw things off completely, I don't know. But I doubt it'll do anything. It'll just be an animation. But I'll have it uh, mapped like that. I'm going with adjustable landing gear this time. And. I had some weird effects with it, so I'm actually going to try and flip it around and see if that helps. And when it retracted, it actually caused us to slow down. So I'm wondering if it was a directional thing or whether that's just going to happen. Otherwise, the center of mass and center of lift are like that, which is a little bit weird. But of course, the center of lift is really far back with these huge wings. That's going to happen. Uh, the center of mass is also really far back when you take a look at the huge air intakes in the engines. Um, where exactly they ought to be is a little bit of a trouble. I know this can get off the ground, uh, but we might want to adjust those a little bit more. Let's see. This is practically the maximum takeoff weight for the XB70. So if we want to get off the ground a little bit easier, we can lighten it up a bit. It's got a lot of fuel more than a hundred tons of fuel. It's just barely, the back gear is just barely where it needs to be in order to make sure we don't flop on our tail. Anyway, atmospheric autopilot on, ignition. Saying three hours and 57 minutes of fuel right now. It's gonna take us a while to get to Mach 3, which is what the XB70 was capable of doing. We'll get far up. Oh, we are going to need to steer a little bit here. Or a lot. Steer more, please. Okay, 100 meters per second. Uh, uh. Okay, well, we're going up. Oh, wow. Just barely, though.
that's how we are. But I don't want to retract the landing gear just in case the thing that happened to me last time will happen again. We suddenly slow down. So I'll wait until we're at 400 meters and then retract. Okay, let's see what happens with the gear. There, you see, it actually pitches up and slows down. That's That should not happen. I mean, I guess it gets more lift because the gear is retracting and there's less drag, but I don't know. That Most planes do not have that happen to them. Okay, we are accelerating and climbing. I'm just gonna go in this direction. We'll go up the eastern seaboard. Well, our controls are all over the place half the time. We are five minutes into the flight and not quite where I want to be in order to break the sound barrier. Okay, I think we'll break the sound barrier here, eight kilometers up. So of course with this I couldn't like tweak the engines or anything like I've been doing with the SR-72. These are the correct engines, if I can click on them. Uh, they are General Electric YJ-93s with the correct thrust and curve and specific impulse and whole business. So no tricks on this. And with far managing the wings and the canards and the control surfaces, well, there's not a whole lot of leeway to fix things if it can't do what it's supposed to do. And we are past Mach 1 at least, so that's a relief. Control's a little bit weird though. With the atmospheric autopilot. I think I'm gonna increase how much control the canards have. Well, and, and every so often it suddenly dips down for some reason, I don't understand. I haven't had this with other planes so far. This is one of the earliest planes I made, and it's a very simple model. In fact, uh, the process of making it was turned into a tutorial, and you can find the videos on the channel if you search for the XB-70. So I kept it intentionally simple, and I've decided to keep it that way, just use the bump map to make it look a little bit better. Well, we seem to have stabilized now. Maybe it's because we're higher up, or the speed, or maybe actually increasing the control authority of the canards was the deal. Not sure. Well, I'll give the wing tilt a try. Well, it doesn't hurt anything, but probably doesn't help anything either. Actually, maybe our vertical speed has gone down. Let's see. It's going down right now. That might be just because I'm turning. Let's extend the wings. Yep, I don't see any difference. We'll keep them down since they ought to be. Okay, well, it's been 13 minutes and 50 seconds, and I'm gonna start fizz warp to let it accelerate. Just gonna take some time. Okay, we have reached Mach 2. We're temporarily going down a little bit, but we'll start going back up again. Took 26 minutes though, so it's been a while. Well, we're really just creeping up there. I think there's a little bit too much drag to get to Mach 3 very easily. I'm gonna come out of time warping and uh, get the wing tips out again to see. Just in case that changes something. I don't think so. We'll try and go up more first and then level out. As we go up, of course, the drag goes down because the air density goes down. 
Well, trying to go down here, but the balance of things isn't great. We have six times that amount of thrust, and that has to exceed the amount for the drag in order for us to accelerate, basically. That's, that's the idea. Okay, past Mach 2.8, it looks like hanging out a little bit lower and bearing with the dynamic pressure is a better deal. All sorts of aerodynamic effects on the body that probably ought not to be there at these speeds. Well, Mach 2.964 not making it easy on me here. Okay, Mach 3 and then we'll wait until our vertical speed is zero. We've basically burned through half of our fuel, almost half of our fuel. It says we have two hours left. We've burned through that in 56 minutes in game though. Well, seems to be performing right-ish. I wish it would accelerate sooner, but uh, it gets to the right number, ultimately. I don't think it'll get too much beyond Mach 3. Probably there were heat and other limits stopping it anyway. I am not going to try and land it, because we are... I've got an airport mod. There's a lot of airport sites. So, yeah, there's St. John's. That's probably Halifax. But we're over here. It's still going to take a while to turn to get to one of them. So, we'll just call it and I'll move on to the SR-72. Our vertical speed is now level. So we are at Mach 3.09 and still accelerating and going up. So I'll take it as it is there and we'll turn to the SR-72. Okay, please let this be the last time I have to test this. Well, there is the whole coming out of the high speed situation which seems to wreck it immediately. So... We'll have to figure out whether we can do that properly, too. But here we go. Atmospheric autopilot is on. Uh, something's weird. Hold on, let me just check that the two engines are balanced. They seem to be. Alright, well, whatever the weirdness was, it wasn't systematic okay looking good okay we are past Mach 3 we'll try to get to Mach 3.7 before switching and probably 27 kilometers in altitude now, the thing we need to keep an eye on is the atmospheric density we do still need some atmosphere about 1% would be good. We could probably deal with a little bit less, but we can't go too high. Okay, well, I'll go for 26 kilometers up. That will be enough. It could probably switch earlier, but it'll be very decisive now, I think. We're going from 108 kilonewtons. And there's still a little bit of a drop there, but nearly 400 kilonewtons to accelerate in scramjet mode. So here we go, Mach 4. Hopefully much more, yep, much more easily than before. We can go up a little bit more. Okay, Mach 5. And it does guzzle the liquid hydrogen like this. The stage time is not right down there. I don't know why. Well those two agree, but I don't think it'll hold out like that. Just taking a look at the numbers, well maybe. Well now it's saying two years, so I'm confused. It's confused, I'm confused. What does this say now? Still also the same? This still says seven minutes, but it's going up. 
the higher we go, the less it'll consume. Because we have less oxygen that way to mix with the fuel, so it burns less fuel. I don't recommend actually turning it very much when it's going at this speed. Well, uh, we better level off. This is probably too high already. 0.5% atmosphere. 40 kilometers. Probably the limit. It's like 120,000 feet. A little bit more than 120,000 feet. Which is where we were supposed to be in flight sim, though we could exceed that. Here, you will run out of oxygen if you try to ex go too far. I have. So, yes. And of course, everybody who's played Kerbal has with air breathing things. Actually, stabilizing it is tough because it's very touchy. Mach 8. Well, lots of flame effects. I put a lot of heat tolerance on this, so for the most part that's not going to be an issue. Oh, there's Mach 9. Now we don't want to get too far beyond that. It was only supposed to get Mach 10 tops, but the curve should take care of that, the thrust curve on the engines. At this point, it says 15 minutes here, going to 16, 17. The faster we go, the lower the thrust, which means less fuel consumed, too. I'll just keep that. There are lots of windows, but since that stage time is not telling the truth. We'll close the two engines now. Uh, it seems to be flattening out at uh, 9.44, about 3,000 meters per second. Now in flight sim, it was able to fly for maybe 45 minutes at past Mach 9, so I was able to cross the country. Right now, well, we've sort of passed the Bahamas, so we're not pretty, we're not very far off right now. I think this is about right. We are carrying the same kerosene and liquid hydrogen load that was carried by the plane in flight sim, but our dry mass is much heavier. So it's the same amount of jet fuel, same amount of scramjet fuel in terms of mass. Where they put that mass in the flight sim version, I have no idea because it was too small. But anyway, Mach. 9.45 seems to be the limit. And I think that's satisfactory. Now the stage time is ticking down. 26 minutes it looks like. After we've been at it for a little while. So I think this is good enough. I'm probably not going to work on it more. The, except for can we get slower? <laughs> can we get slower safely? Now, to some extent, decelerating with uh, scramjet is going to happen automatically. The slower you go, the less thrust you're going to get out of it. So, but maybe we should. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, that's that was dangerous looking right there. Okay, we'll take it easy. Now, now we got some overheating. I think it's on the landing gear actually. It seems very hard to slow down with this. Well, now it's slowing down. I think I've hit the sweet spot there. Where it's not got to plunge down. Oh, there's also high dynamic pressure too. Well, thicker atmosphere will help. That's Haiti in front of us now. 
I think I'll just let it go down to Mach 1 this mode before switching. Trying to switch at Mach 3.7 is probably too dangerous, so I'll rip it apart. Okay, says nominal on the flight status now. We're obviously going to decelerate very dramatically. In fact, even if I push up the... Oh, it looks like you can accelerate. I am interested to see what the minimum speed it can actually accelerate at would be. In scramjet mode. They can sort of barely accelerate at Mach 2. It's probably overperforming. Still able to accelerate a bit, but we are going down, so there is that. We, we are going down pretty quickly. Oh, 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 don't do that. No shuddering. Now, if I level off, does it accelerate? Yeah, at these speeds, when I level off, it doesn't accelerate in the scramjet mode. So that's at least a thing. I do wonder what happens in Flight Sim if you hit the scramjet on early. I didn't actually try that. Okay, we are below Mach 1. Whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, switching modes. Okay, well that was smooth enough. We are on kerosene again. I really sped up the transition. No, practically no spool up time at all. Um, well, the airport is a little bit. And that's uh, Santo Domingo. That's a uh, ways away though. I think I'm just gonna set it down wherever, for now. Whoa, whoa! It really likes to slow down. <laughs> No need for air brakes on this. Whoa. It does not like life right now. Trying to be high up and slow is not a good combination. The throttle is super touchy. Like very quickly slowing down or very quickly speeding up right around the 50% point. Not too sure that's great. Maybe I should set sort of a minimum throttle for the engines so that it isn't so fine. We're using a lot of pitch authority at 127 meters per second, so I think we'll stay here. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not decelerate too much more. Oh boy, don't slow down that much. It's probably dangerous. It's probably dangerous. Don't do that. Uh, don't go up either. It's really tight. Okay. <laughs> Look how quickly it slowed down. I don't get it. It's weird. It's still weird. Um, might as well be its own parachute. But anyway, so far performing okay. I probably should do something with the electric charge. I still didn't put the alternator. We didn't do enough of a flight. Technically, you'd probably run out of fuel before you actually ran out of electric charge. That's one hour of electric charge, but... Yeah, probably something should be done about that. Anyway, so there you have it. And that is the SR-72 and the XB-70. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.